Stuart, what fascinates me about consciousness is I've seen, as I've witnessed the, uh, the focus on consciousness in the last few couple of decades, is more and more serious philosophers moving towards panpsychism, where in order to explain this, this unbelievable phenomenon of consciousness, you, you have to go to panpsychism, where everything has some kind of proto-consciousness, that everything that exists, this table, chair, everything has something like that. It's such an extreme position, which to me is fascinating because it shows the, the extent of the problem. Some people think it's not a problem, it's just the brain doing stuff. But when you think deeply about it, and some of these philosophers who you and I know are being forced into positions that, you know, a few decades ago would have seemed absolutely absurd. Not just philosophers, neuroscientists like uh, Christoph Koch and Giulio Tononi have now become out of desperation panpsychists because their emergence complexity arguments just fall flat. They, they don't make no sense at all. The problem with the panpsychist approach in general is that they say, well, all, everything, meaning matter, meaning material objects, uh, has a, a property of, of consciousness. I don't think that's right because I think consciousness and everything really is a process. It's not a, a, a property of matter. It's, a, it's an event. It's a sequence of events. So the atoms and, and the particles in this table are collapsing to, to give us the table. And similarly, the events in our brain are collapsing to give us a sequence of conscious moments. So I put the, the, uh, the basic level of consciousness at the Planck scale, uh, collapsing into discrete events, which have these primitive, undifferentiated moments of conscious experience. So that's, that's where- So the, these primitive, undifferentiated events like whitehead the, evocations, whitehead occasions. But they are the same that's occurring in, in, the, in the matter of my neurons and the matter of this table. They're the same thing. Qualitatively. But our brains, our microtubules, take them and or orchestrate them, organize them, give them cognition, give them information, allow them to do useful computing to give us the conscious experience that we have and the conscious choices we say that we they have. They do this. The, the microtubules, do they orchestrate? I mean, that that's, uh, well, what that sounds like there's a guy with a, with a little baton in there saying... The you know, microtubules what? are the guy. <laughs> or actually, the guy is the information and the... Pro so the inputs come in from, from the outside or from uh, internal memory and orchestrate these events and you have a, a moment of conscious... The conscious... The collapse itself is consciousness. There's no little guy in there. The moment event, the, the conscious event, the collapse is a moment of consciousness. But why are you then criticizing the proto-consciousness panpsychic uh, crowd? You are inappropriately criticizing them because I think you guys are saying the same thing. You may be putting a little bit of a tweak on it and maybe putting a nice, a nice, a, a nice structure to it in terms of how it happens, but they're claiming that there has to be something, and I think you're talking about the same thing. I think you're, you're criticizing them unnecessarily. Robert, you're, I'm you're saying... in the same lifeboat. No, I'm saying that consciousness is a type of self-collapse of the quantum wave function. It's not a property of this chair or this table. It's happening due to an event, due to a specific type of quantum collapse that occurs everywhere in the table, in the chair, but it's not a property of the matter of the atoms of the chair. It's, a, it's an event, it's a process. Is that a distinction without a difference? I think it's a big difference because number one, it's consistent with Whitehead, occasions of experience. Number two, That well, doesn't make it right. Correct, but it, it gives it a, a, a philosophical underpinning that's pretty solid, since he's uh, since he he was right about a lot of things, and it brings in non-locality, which allows for not only you know stuff outside the brain, but also binding and synchrony in the brain. I think the neuroscientists have a hard problem explaining perfect gamma synchrony over wide regions of the brain. Well, no, look, I, th I, I think the, the panpsychic crowd would certainly agree the neuroscientists have a lot of problems, or they wouldn't have gone to panpsychism, right? right? But, but so they need to go farther. You guys agree with that. With, with which? You, you guys both agree that the neuroscience can't can't explain consciousness. So they're saying that they have to put a proto consciousness in everything. You're saying I'm using the fundamental uh, uh, quantum effects that is in everything, but in a special way in microtubules, right? Something like that. But I mean, they, they've been you know finally after all these years they realize that the, that their approach is bankrupt and they're going to panpsychism, but they're not going far enough. And I think it's, it is a, a distinction that makes a difference to go to the quantum level and say it's a particular type of quantum state collapse that, that is an event. Consciousness is a sequence of events. It's not a property. It's not a state. It's not a thing. It's a sequence of events, a process.